I am back. You remember um, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Terminator? He keeps saying, I am back. So I am back. And also, could you please put your left hand on your head? And with your right hand, rub your shoulder. This is the way I work. I do not trick anybody. Okay? And I can see all of you from here. So if anybody goes into a nap, I can tell. So this is why I will be energetic to energize you. Right, so I will talk about the Faith for Earth initiative, which is run by the United Nations Environment Program that was established two years ago. And because of the uh, initiative, we are all here together in partnership with the Vatican, Sinessa, the World Wide Fund, and all of you. So uh, this is part of our objective, is to bring people together. People of the same uh, mindset. We are all into um, having an action done on uh, the emergency uh, situation that we are in. So in 2017, I was requested to come up with a strategy, a global strategy, by the executive director of uh, UNEP. And um, the focus of the strategy is how to engage our faith-based communities and faith-based organizations in the work on environmental issues. And this is why uh, working with so many of you and others who are not here, uh, in 2017, uh, we had a United Nations Environment Assembly number three, not the one that was organized this year, uh, but the one before that, and uh, 42 organizations representing 12 faiths and uh, 24 of, of the uh, distinguished uh, eminent faith leaders were there, and we discussed this strategy. The strategy revolves around three important goals, which all of you have asked actually to work on. The first one is global leadership for policy change. So we need our governments, our leaders, to adopt policies that are based on values, ethics, and morals, and more importantly, on faith principles, whether different uh, faith principles, and we all agree that all faiths agree to a great extent on environmental issues and the uh, care for the creation. So. Uh, this is why we have been involving faith-based organizations in policy dialogue. The last one we, uh, we had uh, last March 2019, which we called the Faith for Earth Dialogue, where we brought in 160 uh, faith-based organizations and leaders uh, from uh, 56 organizations representing the uh, major global uh, faiths who were engaged in a dialogue on uh, the theme of the United Nations Environment Assembly at, uh, in March, which was uh, on uh, sustainable consumption and production and innovation uh, to tackle environmental issues. Uh, the dialogue uh, took five days long, and there was an opportunity uh, for the faith-based uh, leaders uh, to engage with policymakers, we had 5,000, or actually it was 6,000 participants, uh, mostly ministers uh, of environment, uh, foreign affairs, and, and planning, and so on. So there was an engagement in uh, the process. Now, one of uh, the objectives of this goal is actually to create what we call the Faith for Earth coalition, a global coalition that will bring. Uh, faith leaders at different levels. The first level is the highest uh, faith leadership, like uh, Pope Francis, uh, Imam of Al Azhar, uh, Guru Nanak, different faiths. And then at the level of CEOs of faith based organizations, the um, Secretary General of the World Council of Churches, the Chair of the Trustees of the Parliament of World Re Religions, and so on and so forth. The third level is the youth level. 
So, and, and today actually uh, some of our colleagues have proposed to actually do something like that and it is in, in our uh, objectives to create a council for youth to come together and keep the momentum and do the actions. And the fourth level is at the level of scholars, scientists and theologians where we bring science and religion together to work uh, for the benefit of our uh, Mother Earth. Now, the second objective of uh, the um, strategy or Faith for Earth is faith-based investment. And everybody was talking about, you know, industries and carbon-based economies and so on. And what we're saying, we are part of the problem as faith organizations. We are part of the problem. Faith-based organizations are the fourth largest economic power on earth. They own trillions and trillions of dollars. So they need to practice what they preach. So investment by churches, by mosques, by you know, faith-based organizations need to be greened and need to be decarbonized. And this is one of the objectives that we're working on. The third goal is to bring the science-based evidence for religious and faith teachings. When, when an imam or a priest goes to a church, we want to empower them with the scientific facts, you know, putting them in a very simple language. Uh, yesterday there was talk about the IPCC, the IPBS, and so on. For imams and priests, how would they know what, what is that about? So we want to translate that into a language that is understood by faith leaders that can be easily uh, transmitted uh, to the faith followers. All of that is supported by the entire uh, UNEP system. So we have the uh, platforms, we have the networks, we have the science and, and divisions that are supporting the Faith for Earth initiative. Now, what is the importance of bringing youth issues into uh, um, the debate? You know, three million deaths every single year because of environmental pollution. Imagine, God forbids, that one of those three million kids is one of our kids. What do we do? We must and we will take action for that matter. So why it is not, you know, incentivizing, encouraging us to take action for those three million deaths that we lose every single year because of environmental pollution. We do need to take action. Now, striking figures. 8% um, of the habitable land of, on Earth are owned by faith-based organizations. 50% of schools and universities are owned by faith-based organizations. 5% of forests in fact, 28% of forests, commercial forests, in Austria alone are owned by the church. There has been a 3,400% increase in investment by faith-based organizations over the past 10 years. So we are talking about huge, humongous potential that is out there that needs to be uh, tapped into. Now, what can we do? I should have asked you the question before I showed this slide. Imagine 37 million churches around the world, 3.6 million mosques, 20,000 synagogues, and countless of temples. What does that mean? If each one church, each church, installs one solar panel, immediately we'd have 37 million solar panels, and that is hundreds of thousands of carbon dioxide being mitigated or uh, eliminated from the atmosphere. If we, each church, each mosque, each temple, plants 10 trees around them, so we are talking about, we can actually uh, build the, the, the great green wall. So we can, as leaders of faith, we can implement it, we can practice what we preach immediately without any efforts. 50% of the schools, of course, and the universities, they have fleets of buses. 
Those buses can be transformed into electric buses, for example. Okay, so immediately there is a contribution from faith-based organizations into uh, fighting climate change and environmental pollution. Cleanup campaigns, we have been going out to clean up campaigns. Almost 650 activities during the World Environment Day on the 5th of June this year were done by faith-based organizations. So there is a humongous potential that can be uh, done by faith-based organizations. Food waste and food uh, banks, again, uh, many churches, many mosques, and many uh, temples, they provide uh, food for the needy people and uh, they are actually using the unused, I don't want to be uh, using the wasteful or the waste of the food, but unused food, that is 30% of the food produced on an annual basis goes to landfills without even being consumed. So there is a huge potential of leadership of the faith organizations. A planting of the trees, as I mentioned, we can do a lot there. Now, these are practical things that can be done, but what and how can you youth be mobilized? First of all, decision making, and this is what you have been calling for. We need to sit on the table of the decision makers, and this is why we have, for example, as part of UNEP, uh, and part of the stakeholders engagement policy, a youth um, constituency that comes and delivers and uh, makes speeches in, with the decision makers of the, of, the, of the world. So we need to have that. We cannot keep campaigning outside uh, uh, rooms and conferences. We need to come in as young people, I am considering myself as young, so we need to come into the room and actually sit on the table. Elections. Who elected the presidents of today? The, the, uh, the political leaders. It is us. It is you, the young people who are 18 years and, uh, old and, and, and more. So you can actually impact the elections from now on. Uh, neighborhood impact. If you cannot elect your mayor or your municipality leader, you can do uh, uh, small elections in your neighborhood. Or without elections, just do it and be the leader of that community and make the change. Knowledge and, and communications, of, co of course, uh, schools during the curricula and uh, extracurricular activities and, and so on, the school uh, clubs uh, and, and, and different things. Social responsibility and good citizenship. Be the citizen you want to see in others. If you want people to change, change yourself. I know all of the people who are here sitting in this room are change leaders. So I'm not addressing you. I'm addressing you to incentivize, to encourage other friends and colleagues in, the, in your community, in, in your schools and universities and outside in your uh, network. So please be the change leader that you want to see in others. Innovation and technology, most of the innovation of today is led by young people. And we strive today, our technology strives and in our industry because of the innovation of young people. And of course, advocacy, do not stop advocating and campaigning. Now, what UNEP has done since uh, we started talking about young people, we established in 1985 a strategy for engagement with, with young people. In 2011 and 2012, we mobilized uh, the young people and established Tunza. Tunza means in Swahili, take care. So it is uh, to, to take care of the youth among themselves, but also of the communities that uh, we serve. We publish, uh, probably you've heard of the Global Environment Outlook, which is a, um, a um, flagship scientific report that um, describes and uh, analyzes the state of environment of the world. Now, we have started since uh, GEO5 to publish one, not for the youth, but for, by uh, youth themselves. So there is one for policymakers and one by youth for policymakers as well. So GEO5 and GEO6 uh, uh, have had um, uh, publications by the youth. We established the Young Champions of the World and we 
uh, give uh, rewards and, in, and, and incentivize the young people, the entrepreneurs uh, of the uh, youth, uh, to come up with solutions for environmental problems, and we help them nourish their innovations and so on. We have a global university network. We have now uh, more than 500 universities uh, at the global level as members of this uh, network. They do what? They change the, or they integrate into their curricula, whether it is on theology, whether it is on sports, whether it is on math, and we integrate environmental issues. This is one. The second one is that they adopt uh, sustainable development principles in their own buildings and principles. So they change their systems to be environmentally sustainable. And the third one, you cannot be a minaret of knowledge without being a minaret uh, um, supporting the local communities. So those universities, uh, universities have committed to supporting the local communities around uh, them. MOOCs, the uh, massive online uh, courses that we publish on or we, we engage uh, young people um, as free courses uh, on environmental issues as well. And uh, the Faith for Earth publication, which is being now um, edited and, and, and produced by major universities around the world. And it is actually linking faith teachings with environmental uh, science. And I stop here. I hope I have not taken more than I should. Thank you very much. We thank him very much for this wonder for that wonderful presentation.